what I would recommend is for this session, if you if you are look up on the top right where you have your choice of, of viewing either by speaker or by gallery, you're going to want to view by speaker. Okay, so um, select that so that you're viewing by speaker at this point, and and then I'm going to go ahead and get rolling. So let's see. All right, so um, as you as you all know, this is the this is uh, the session. Um, so we're going to be working on we're going to be doing first. We're going to find some seesaw activities. I'm going to show you how to adapt those activities, and and then I'm going to show you how to create your own. And of course, I'm going to show you how to share them uh, with one person or with your team or with the entire school or with the entire seesaw world. So we'll go through all of those different steps and you'll have some time to be able to explore a little bit. So for, let's see. Um, so what you need for this workshop, and this is really, I mean, if you want to actually do the activities as we're doing them, you really need to have a, a Seesaw teacher account and be a teacher in a particular class. So it would be a good idea uh, for you to open your seesaw right now and just get it doesn't matter what class you're in but any class will be fine and um because we will tap into those things and i will i will go step by step with you uh in in uh doing doing the different activities that we're going to do so you're going to want to have that open if you don't have a seesaw teacher account that's okay you can just watch the demo and later on uh, when you do at some point or uh, you can go ahead and go through it again um, and for assistance uh, if you if you if the teacher who you're working for uh, would like you to be added on to their seesaw we can we can do that sometime this week if you'd like all right so um, what I'd like to do is if if you could think about this question and what has Seesaw changed in your teaching and go ahead and post an answer in the chat. So how, how, how has Seesaw changed your teaching? Oh, I like that, Najee. And I agree 100%, Pamela. It definitely provides more interaction for the online learning. I think it's also, for me, it's nice to see like quickly what the students have done. Anyone else? Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, the, and, and especially, Jag, I think when we can comment that, you know, we've given the opportunity for kids who are pre-readers to be able to comment on things with the voice recording, I think, which is really nice, something that they couldn't have done previously. I think that's huge. So. Awesome. All right. So uh, just really quickly, I want to, I, I've got in addition to um, this, I've got some resources that you can find, and I just posted, I just posted that in the uh, in the chat. So if you go to that link, everything that I talk about is linked there for for today. I'll give you a minute to do that. I'll just refer to those links. I'll try and post them in the chat as well as we go through them. But I think I think we could probably all agree, and I think research supports that that students learn best when they are actively engaged in constructing and reflecting on their learning. And I think Seesaw really helps us to be able to do that, and especially in an online setting, I think we can we can really 
use some different techniques to get them engaged. So the objective for today uh, is to try and help you to develop some transformational learning experiences. Uh, we, want, we want those experiences hopefully to get the kids more engaged, to give them some, some student-driven learning opportunities and be able to reflect on, on what they do in your class. So the first thing that I'm going to do, and I'm gonna ask you to follow along, this is a good time to open up your class in Seesaw is we're, I'm just going to show you how to get into the library and, and how to um, add different activities to your library for Seesaw. Remember the, um, that activities are, are different than posting in the journals, first of all, right? So when you post something, when you post something just in the journal, uh, you, so for example, here in the journal, when you're posting, that's what we normally do for our normal classes and it posts to everybody. But the activities is a little bit different because it, it sets them kind of in their own container and the kids respond exactly to those activities. Whereas if you put something in the journal, they're responding just in that big giant news feed that we have. So important distinction between activities and journal. So has everybody, everybody got their class open? Yeah, thumbs up. Yeah. All right. And, and you wanna select assign activity. That's what you wanna click on. You wanna click here on the plus and then click assign activity. So make sure you do that. And then you'll see something like this. If, if you've completed activities, you'll see a whole bunch of things here that you've already created. Um, select, be, you wanna, and if you're not in my library, please select my library right now. And regardless of whether or not you've made activities, you will have these two things. You'll have create new activity and you'll have browse the community library. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on browse the community library. And when, when they're saying the community library, they're talking about everything in Seesaw. So when I when I did this, a um, bunch of things popped up and I actually have mine set up when I when I did the search, I set mine up for third grade it, originally and it was all subjects. And so we got a bunch of stuff coming up like remote learning for third grade, fall and autumn activities. So what I would recommend is think of a grade level that you're working with and then what subject you would like this to be in because that's, that's going to be how they're going to um, categorize the different activities. I'll give you a moment just to do that. And what I ended up searching for was I searched for third grade and digital citizenship. And I came up with a bunch of results here. And when you get your results, uh, um, what I'd like you to do is just kind of scroll through and see if there's something that looks good for you, something that you, you might want to try, or you just might want to play with for this act, for this workshop. Either way is fine. And also notice that we're now in the community tab because we're looking at all the different activities that are posted on Seesaw that, people, that other teachers have shared on Seesaw. So here's the activity I've chosen. I chose internet safety three to five. And part of what drew me to this activity, why I selected it, and you can see it was Mrs. Schaefer, someone who I have no clue who that is, uh, she was the one who, she was the one who created this activity. Um, but one of the things I liked was it, it looked like there was a nice um, descriptive uh, explanation here. I also noticed that there's a template that students are going to edit at the end. And I also noticed that over 3000 teachers have already liked this activity. So I think, I think 
all of those things kind of gave me when I looked at mine and I did it earlier this or over the weekend, all those things kind of kind of led me to select this one as opposed to any other. Um, let's see. Let me just move myself over here. So what I'd like you to do is, and, and by the way, one other thing I'll, I'll point out is that you'll notice in the instructions here, they use some things like the T tool and these little icons for different things. Uh, later on, I'm gonna show you how to add those into your instructions. It's really easy and it makes for a much nicer looking uh, activity. And the students know exactly what to click on when, when they see those icons. So what I would like you to do is click on the heart and then click assign on your activity. And this is how we're, this is how we bring it into our own library. All right, so once you've done that, scroll down to the three dots at the bottom and then click on copy and edit activity. And you'll notice there's some other options here and we'll talk about the share activity later. Uh, you can always remove something from your library later on if you don't want it, you don't wanna get it cluttered up. I have a bunch of demonstration things in my library, uh, if you look at that. Okay, so now what pops up is it pops up into my class. And um, when the students are, are going to complete this, they'll complete it in the active, they'll be clicking on the activities area. And it'll show up with a red dot there if you've posted something for them. And the parents also get notifications for this. And the way, they, the way they're going to complete it is they're going to add response. And the, what's nice when I said earlier that, that these become contained, uh, you'll notice here it says assigned to all students in Mr. Katz's demo. It's a little hard to see because it's small. And what you'll notice is that as students begin to turn in the assignment, it'll list here who's turned it in and who has not. So it's a really easy way to check, as opposed to if you're posting something in the journal, you have to scroll through the entire journal to try and figure out if people have posted it or not. Or you have to click on each individual student in order to figure that out. So either way, I would say it's probably, it's, it's probably going to be best. Like I, I personally would prefer to have my assignments and activities than just posting in the journal. So now that you've done that, let me just, I don't want you to, I, I wanted to just explain this, but you don't need to do this because we don't wanna spam everybody with a bunch of activities. Um, but I just wanna quickly go through the steps on how to share the activity. And it's pretty simple. There's, there's different ways to do it. Remember I, I mentioned on the three dots here and you, you would click on share activity. And when you do that, you can you have some different options. One is you can email it to the teachers, and when you when you do this, you'll get a bunch of teachers' emails pop up who are in our domain, and you can email it directly to them. And if there's not uh, if there's not somebody there who you you're looking for, you can type in their email address. And so if I want to share something with you, Gail, I can I can share it directly with you, and it's just between the two of us and no one else has to know. The other option is you can get the activity link. So you can copy the link and then I can just paste it in an email or a text or whatever and share that with whoever I want instead of emailing them. You can also share it to the school library. So ISKL, because we've purchased a, a domain um, you know, we're, we're on a paid version of Seesaw. We have our own library and you can search just the ISKL li library for what other teachers at ISKL have done. And you can share yours to just ISKL, which is really kind of a nice thing to do as we continue to use Seesaw year after year.
And when you do that, you say, you say uh, publish to the school library and it'll ask you the class and the subject and that way it makes it easier for others when they're searching for it to be able to do it, to be able to find it. All right, so now that we've, now that we've done that, um, do you, actually, let me, let me back up a little bit. Um, something that you can do once you're, once you're in the activity that you downloaded, you can edit that activity. But what I'd like to do is, is go ahead and think about creating an activity from scratch right now. And so I'm going to, I'm going to walk you through that process and let's do that. And then if you'd like, you can either copy things from the other activity or you can start to build your own activity for a lesson. And I think this is where we really end up having a lot of power because we can actually create our own stuff and make it really us, which is nice. All right. So when you're, when you're building your activity, um, it's at, like any lesson, you know, and I know we all know this in education is you want to have a clear objective. And I know a lot of, especially the lower grades are using the can do statements, uh, step-by-step -step text and audio instructions, especially when we're doing online work. And, and then it's a good idea to have some type of multimedia examples. You might, it might be your voice, uh, explanation. It might be a video. And um, I also think it's a really good idea to have some type of reflection at the end of the activity. So can you guys find your way back here to the activity library? Do you guys remember how to do that? This is the test. So what you're going to do is you're gonna click on the green plus. Let me go back to that. So if we go back to here, you're gonna to go to, you're gonna click on the plus to add and then click on assign activity. And that'll bring you back to this space here. So now you should see here, the activity that you just copied over and that's now in your library and you can edit it or you can assign it to a class, which is really nice. So go ahead and click on create new activity. And then you'll get a, a screen that looks something like this. And of course you wanna put the activity name and then you can start including instructions. Now, remember I, I mentioned about the icons. There's, um, there's a little, there's kind of a little code that you can put in to get those different icons. And it's linked in that, in the webpage that I gave you at the beginning. And if you can see here, each of these different symbols has a different way of writing it. And it always starts and ends with a colon. So for example, if you wanna put in the little text uh, label, you would put in colon, label, colon. The microphone would be colon, M-I-C, colon. And then you'll get these little icons in your instructions. Alex wrote a blog post about this and shared, and shared these resources. And um, this is, but I, I have a link in that, in the, uh, I have a link in the blog post that I sent you.
And I'm going to post that link again, just in case somebody came in after I posted it. And that's got the link to that document. You can, by the way, that document's a PDF or it might be a, an image. You can download that so you have it on your computer so you can use that in the future. So as you're thinking about what you're going to um, put in here, you might want to think about uploading an exemplar. So if you've already completed this assignment or you've had a, a student who's completed this assignment, you've maybe assigned it in class in the past, you can upload that. And that's always really helpful so that the students know what it is that you're looking for in the end. Um, you can always link to something else. You, you could record a demo video. I think that's really helpful. And I think the kids really like to see our faces when we're giving them assignments. And of course, you can always attach any materials that support the activity. They could be videos, uh, documents, or whatever. And what's really important is you want to add something where the students are going to be responding. And so this could be this could be an image, this could be a document, it could be any of those six choices that we always have. How about if I give you a couple of minutes to to like build and work on your on on the activity or would you rather me um continue on what's the what's the feeling am i putting you too much on the spot by building an activity annette i'd like to muck around for a minute so that if i've got some questions then i could ask you so okay. I don't know, two or three minutes i don't know but Let, let's do that try it try and just put in some instructions and try and use some of the icons, the little colon and then the name and the colon, just to see how they turn out. Even if you don't make a real activity, um, just try putting some of those in right now. And let's see, let's see how that goes. And I'll give you, let's say three minutes and I'll be quiet for three minutes while you do that.
Steve, I have a question. Go ahead. Sorry, I muted myself just to make sure I wouldn't talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I don't. I downloaded something, and it's um, uh, an activity for movement. But and then there's a link there. But it's. Um, can I use that link if I've downloaded someone else's activity and I've made it my own? Um, can you do that, or you can't do that? Oh, I think that's fine. Uh, especially, I think, you know, when we, because we're always concerned about crop copyright and those kind of things, but yes. when someone shares it to the community library, they know that others are going to use it. They're putting it there for yeah. others to use. So I think you're safe using whatever it is that's there. So that means, are. so the link should work. It should definitely yes. test it. Definitely yeah. test oh, yes, it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anybody else have any questions as you've tried to dig in a little bit? Have you tried adding the icons in? The icons is the best part. I genuinely had no idea you could do that. I always wondered how teachers added it. Thank you for that. Sure. Um, I do have a question about adding yourself in a video into the activity. Um, mm -hmm. Where do we do that? So what, so what you would do um, if you wanted to add yourself into an activity, it's, it would be, let me, let me find the slide. So uh, in this area, you could either add voice instructions or you could add video instructions. Um, when you're, let's see, let me go back a little bit. Here we go. It would be at this point where it says add multimedia instructions for the example. And then when you click on that, you'll get those six options that Seesaw always has. And those six options will um, allow you to record yourself or to upload a recording if you've already done it. Okay, thank you. That's a good question. Other questions? Ashton, it's like this. Is there, um, would, would you guys like a, a little more time to, to work on this? Uh, would you like to try and share it with someone? If you wanna share it with me, you're welcome to, to just share the activity with me uh, so you don't feel like you're spamming your friends um, just as part of the workshop. And I'm happy to have a look or, or not if you don't want me to. But if you wanna just try sharing the activity uh, you can give that a try. Would it be helpful if, if I showed you how I would adapt that activity that I saved? Would that be something that would be worthwhile? Okay, let me go ahead and share my screen. Um, by, by the way, what I'm, I'm not actually sharing my screen right now. I know you're seeing slides, but uh, I'm using a tool that I've been trying out for a little while where you can add slides and then have your face kind of like in Screencastify. And so I'm using a, a separate tool to do this instead of sharing my screen, which is, which is kind of nice. I've, I've liked it so far. I don't know what you guys think, but I, I've enjoyed it. All right, let me, let me go ahead and share my screen. So here I am in that in in my seesaw, and this is my uh, demo class that I, I use when I'm teaching uh, teaching teachers, I should say. So I'm going to go ahead and go into activities. 
And then um, now this was the one that I saved. And let me see if I can. And you can see it has all the cool icons in it. But I, this I already assigned to my class, right? So what I want to do is not be confused by that. I what I want to do is go into assign activity. And it brings me into my library. Now notice that here's Mrs. Schaefer's, the one that I got. And now notice there's another one here that says Stephen Katz. This is because I changed it and adapted it. So let me go, let me open up Mrs. Schaefer's. And, and then when I open hers, what I would do is I would come down here to the three dots. And then I would say copy and edit activity. So now here I have all the choices, but I don't have to start from scratch. This is what I, this is one of the things I really like about Seesaw is, you know, especially um, if you're doing something simple, there's a, there's a pretty good chance that some other teacher has already made and shared an activity. So maybe we don't call ours internet safety. Maybe, maybe we call ours digital citizenship. And maybe I want to just, I'm only doing this for grade three, let's say. So, um, Notice here, you can see, let me try and highlight it, where it says link. It's got the colon link colon, and that comes out as like the little chain, the little links of the chain. So watch your brain pop video on digital et etiquette. Uh, tap the green add button, use the drawing tool, the label tool. And what's kind of cool is like this person already now, I, if I wanted to um, add something to it, uh, maybe maybe for this one I might say, have your parents comments. I don't know. You probably wouldn't do that, but anyways, just to show that you can do do another one. Um, So you can you can change you can change the text in there, and here I can I can look at the example attached by clicking on it. I can see what this other teacher put in there. I could replace that to be something else, or I could record my own instructions here. Notice it comes up with the link, so I might say I could. I could record and say, let's see. Oh, need to allow. Please make sure to watch the movie first and then go to the quiz. And so now I've added these instructions to this. And when I click the check mark twice, it updates and notice now I have the play where I can play my, my voice instructions. I guess I could have added it here as well. Um, and then let's, here's the template that the kids are gonna fill out. So I can take a look at that as well. I could use any of these tools to change it. So if I, you know, Don't, don't be sad if you can't draw as well as I can with a mouse. I've had many years of practice. So I could do that and change the templates or put whatever I wanted. I might have text in here. And then I could save that. And now my template will be saved. And you can, it's hard to tell, but you can see there's that, there's my beautiful happy face and the instructions right at the beginning. So I've just 
made really minor adapt, uh, adaptations to this unit or to this activity. And then once I save it, it's set, it's in, it's in my library. So if I go back to this, to my activity library, now we see three that look similar. There's Miss Schaefer's original one. This was the one that I changed over the weekend. And this is the one that I just did. And I would say, just as a good, as you know, a best practice, I would not continue to change the same one. If now that, I, now that I've made this really what I want, what I would probably do is I would get rid of this one. I don't wanna get confused with a bunch of things that look the same. So now I have Mr. Miss Schaefer's original, I can always go back to that one, or the one that I actually tailored for grade three. So I might wanna do something different for grade four or grade five, but use the same basis of the activity. And it's a really great way to be able to adjust your activities for the groups that you're teaching without making a total overhaul in what you're doing. And that's one thing that I would recommend you. You can, and you could do the same thing. Uh, you could do the same thing with differentiating your materials for your different students. So for example, if I'm here, oops. If I'm in my library, I wanna go ahead and assign it. Now I could, I could assign it to my entire class or maybe this is the EAL version. So I'm not gonna assign it to Christine Wright. I'm only gonna assign it to Stephanie and student 01 because those are the students that need the EAL version of this lesson. And then I could have another version that's maybe a little bit different that I can assign to the students who are ready for that. And so now notice that it's gonna, it's gonna assign it only to two students. And then it's, it's been assigned. So if I were to go back, back to my class here, you'll see that this has been assigned. And notice now it's assigned to two students in Mr. Katz's demo, whereas this one was assigned to all students in Mr. Katz's demo. So I think it offers really good opportunities for differentiation and um, you know, tailoring the lessons to what, whatever the kids need. Any questions on this before I go out of it? Okay, I'm gonna stop uh, so I have a question. So, yep, go ahead. Uh, and I'm sorry if I miss this, I messed up my times and I joined late, so I apologize. That's okay. Um, when you assign, like I'm fine with assigning things, what I've been not able to do is like when um, grade levels or teachers have a slideshow that they're sharing to put the, like you can, it seems like you can't do a direct link to the activity from your slide. Does that make sense? That makes sense and that's correct. You have to actually assign the activity to the class. Right, and, and even once it's assigned though, like I've gone into it and thought, well, there's a link, that is a link and copied it into a slide. It, it won't, it doesn't, is that right? Like you can't do that? I don't think you can. What you could do is, is, is use this to get the student link. Okay. So you could put this into the, um, into the slideshow so it would link directly to that activity. Okay, I have not noticed that before. Thank you. I'll give yeah. that a try. Yeah. Also, one of the things um, I learned last week from Jorge, which I didn't know, is you can pin things to the top so that they always stay at the top. I never knew this, but even in, in journal, in the journal, because I know a lot of times we'll assign something. Uh, let me find something that I assigned. Let's say I assigned this video to watch. And we want it to stay up at the top because when the kids start posting, it ends up getting pushed down in the timeline just like it would in Facebook. And so what you can do is um, you can just say pin to the top. And now this will always stay up here at the top, even as the kids continue to post. It'll, the post will go underneath it, which I just, I never knew until last week. And, yeah, that's really helpful. A lot of the classroom teachers are using it to post their schedule. So the schedule will stay, mm. top, which is really helpful too. That's a, so that's a great idea. That's a great idea. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, other, other questions? Let me get out of that. All right.
right. Well, hey, if you want to continue to play around, and I'll, I'll I'll stick around for the next five minutes or so. Um, and I'm always, you know, available for questions uh, whenever you have them. So, um, you know, just I want to say thanks for coming. I hope I hope you felt like it was worth worth your time. And uh, keep posting. I'll, I'll I'll be here if you need me.